It has been 10 years since the Heaven's Gate cult suicide when 39 people took their own lives, convinced that their souls would then ride on a spaceship. It's an event uh, that still holds some significance a decade later, helping us maybe understand how cults today operate. Our own Ron Claiborne is here with more on that. Good morning, Ron. Good morning again, Bill. Well, no one knows how many cults there are in this country. The best guess is thousands. The Heaven's Gate cult was one of the weirdest of all, and its self-destruction in a house in Southern California, time to the passing of the hail bop comet by Earth, was one of the most dramatic. Good evening. It has been some news day, and we're going to begin tonight with the strange suicide of the 39. It's it was as strange. bizarre as it was shocking. 39 members of the Heaven's Gate cult dead from an overdose of vodka and phenobarbital. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The group's leader, Marshall Applewhite, also known as Doe, left behind a rambling videotape statement that tried to explain what he and his followers had done. They believed that he was basically an alien being who had been Jesus 2,000 years ago, who had come to Earth to find the other aliens that had been on Earth to evacuate before Earth was destroyed. Robert Brunk was the sheriff's deputy who answered the call to check out an anonymous tip of dead bodies in a house in wealthy Rancho Santa Fe outside San Diego. When we went into the foyer area, that's when we started seeing the bodies in various locations. Everybody was wearing a black jumpsuit, a uh, purple uh, shroud that covered their entire upper body, and they all had black Nike uh, shoes on. Among those who died, 27-year-old Gail Mader, seen in this farewell video. She didn't look like Gail because her eyes were all black around them, and she looked older. She was saying how wonderful it was going to be to get to see Doe. Doe was so wonderful. It's killing you. It's just, to us, that was like one suicide. That's Applewhite and 38 murders. It was hardly the first episode of a sex mass self-destruction. Four years earlier, an estimated 80 people died in the assault by federal agents on the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. And by far the worst case was the hundred to commit suicide in Jonestown, Guyana in 1978. But this, this was different. Heaven's Gate was, was a very important event in the 30 years that I've been helping people because people started to understand these were not wacko people. These were smart, educated people from good families. For many Americans, Heaven's Gate shed new light on what Hassan calls destructive cults and their methods. New recruits seduced by a charismatic but often delusional leader, eventually loyal only to the group. Family and friends shunned, and still they continue to proliferate. We're seeing second, third, fourth, fifth generation cults now that we didn't see in the 70s. Luring more people just like Gail Mater, a normal young woman searching for something. We think of all things she could have been doing, you know, she, her whole life ahead of her. One of the lessons learned for many Americans was how cults operate, often using deception to recruit new members and a kind of mind control to retain them. It is thankfully rare that a cult ends like Heaven's Gate did with its members quietly following their devoted leader to their deaths. Well, you see some of the, the, the rigorous deprogramming pro, mm -hmm. you know, that they have for people that pulls them out weeks, months it takes. It's a fascinating glimpse of the human mind. And it often works, but not always. Not always, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ron.